That's a bit bad. Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, hello, I'm Lydia. And if you are new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button, turn notifications on, and give me a thumbs up while you're down there, because it really does help me out. So, today we're talking about A&E when it comes to mental health. Now, if you haven't followed me for the last seven years, then you won't know. I used to live in the northwest of England in Preston, and in that the two years that I lived there, I went to A&E a lot, and I had some good experiences, some bad experiences. While I've lived in London, I've been to a few A&Es. I've not really been to that many. So yeah. I'm going to be using my experience in Preston to talk about the good and the bad. I will talk a bit about London, but it's primarily based in Preston because I had more a &E visits there. So my first ever trip to a &E was when I lived with my mom. We had an argument. I went to the train station to go and throw myself up on the train. I was, only, I was only 17 at the time. So yeah, the first time I went to a &E, I was told, don't leave. So I didn't. I was 17. I didn't think I had a choice. So yeah, I went to a and I spoke to Cam's. You can imagine how that conversation went down. Um, it was, you just need some more support. So he referred me to Cam's for the second time in my life. First time I was under Cam's was when I was in hospital with psychosis and mania. But yeah, they referred me to Cam's by me, by where I lived and I saw them once a week. That's probably the only time I've been given additional support when I've been to A&E for my mental health. That wasn't the only time I've been to that A&E, but the other times were because I'd overdosed and my mum found out. So when I lived in Preston, I got sectioned three times within the space of two months. And I, w I did go in the hospital voluntarily I was section number 136 of the Mental Health Act, section 52 of the Mental Health Act, section 2 of the Mental Health Act. I went through this week when I lived in Preston where I kept getting put on a 136. They said they was going to section me. A day later they, they just said, you, you seem much brighter today so we're going to cancel the section 2. So it didn't work because I tried to kill myself in my own flat and didn't think for help. I keep going on the tangents. I have so many stories about hospitals and psych wars and sections. I'm going to do a series. Hospital series. Yes, that's what I need to do. When I first moved to Preston, the first week I was living there, I got very suicidal. So I used Child Lion. If you don't know the Child Lion, they are for up to 19 year olds. I'll put the information on screen. So I used that and they phoned an ambulance. I gave them my address because I didn't want police I didn't want police turning up so I was I was terrified of police. I still am. I wanna join them. <laughs> Why not join something that you're scared of? And when I went to AE, the mental health like Liaison team, li mental health liaison team were the worst mental health treatment I've ever had the displeasure of working with. Because I wasn't under a mental health team when I first moved to Preston, I was managing quite well on my own. But, oh, well, the, the but. The mental health liaison team were the worst. They were well, used child lion. Yes, because it's a legitimate way of getting support. And I was under 19. And you just type, you don't have to talk to people. That's the problem with a lot of mental health lions, you have to speak to them. And as someone who has crippling anxiety, not fun. So I've never done it. I phoned Samaritans once. They found out where I was. They phoned the police. 
I'm at least sex with me, but I've been hung up on by crisis teams. If you haven't seen that video, it's on the iCard up there. My experience in A&E just wasn't good at that time. They treated me so badly. And they, when the mental health team actually came and saw me, they treated me like I was attention seeking. And it just escalated to me wanting to just say you know, whatever I needed to say to get home. I wasn't honest with them because I probably would have been sectioned. They treated me so badly. And they just treated me like I wasn't a human being. I was treated like a piece of shit. So that's about time when the police took me to A&E. When the police took me to A&E, it was... Oh, shut up. Thank you. See, you have to ask nicely. It works very well. So I was taken to A&E by police. I wasn't on a section 136 because they found me in my home address and I agreed to go to A&E. They didn't leave me because they knew I was going to leave. They did. So I, I, I stayed. So yeah, then the police took me to A&E. It was okay. I was taken more seriously and they referred me to the mental health team. So that was beneficial. I, I got something out. Now, let's go for an example when I was on a 136. Now, Section 136 of the Mental Health Act used to be a 72 hour hold. Now it's only 24 hours. But this is when it was 72 hours. So, I got sectioned in public. I've told the story before. And basically, the police put me on a 136, put me in the van, drove me to A&E where it was a place of safety. Not really, but... And basically... I got treated like I was a criminal. Every time I got up to go to the bathroom, they put me in handcuffs. And I had to have the door open slightly so they could make sure I didn't hurt myself. Which I understand safety for like that. You try wiping him with handcuffs on. It's not easy. But when it came to the A&E staff, they all just looked at me like I was some criminal. And they did they when their mental health act assessment happened, they just dismissed everything I was going through and said it was down to me just wanting attention. And then I kept getting 136 pretty much every other day. And it wasn't easy to deal with. A and E genuinely don't treat people with mental health issues with respect. Why are they beeping? Shut the fuck up. Jesus Christ. But I think it's important to note that, yes, I was kept in A&E for my own safety, but the way the staff treated me was so negligent. I'm going to quickly tell a story of a hospital admission in London. So, last year, in April, I think it was April. April or May. I can't remember exactly. But I was hosp I was put on a section two. I was hospitalised. But that A and E trip that led to me being sectioned. Whew, let me tell you. So the first thing they did when they I got brought in by an ambulance was my blood, which is fine, whatever. Take my blood, enjoy it, you vampires. But then they got the mental health liaison team to come and speak to me. They wanted me to go into hospital, I refused. So they put me on a section 5-2 so I couldn't leave. 
and they had a mental health assessment but the A staff were on my case I was on one to one fucking joys I got up and tried to walk off the security dragged me back in because every hospital has security do mental health work now and I was sedated they gave me 10 milligrams they, they injected me with haloperidol which I take 10 milligrams of the thing and I have done for years it's not going to work and it didn't work they injected me with lorazepam, promethazine <sighs> crazy then eventually one of the female workers came over and asked if I wanted to have a shower and I said yes because I'd been in an A&E for 24 hours and I hadn't showered and it was really bothering me because it was getting hot and I went and had this shower came back they took my fucking shoes they gave me the shoes back when secure transport arrived to take me to the mental health unit that hospital genuinely did treat me with respect don't appreciate being injected with medication but I suppose we'll only go for now but the important thing that I want to point out is they treated me like I was a human being they offered me a shower they didn't have to do that they gave me food they let me have my unicorn with me because they did take all my stuff off me at one point and I asked if I could have my unicorn they said yes so they gave me my unicorn if you don't know who my unicorn is let me introduce you to Mr Unicorn he's a bit flat but he smells of lavender I, I drenched him in lavender oil Mr Unicorn comes everywhere with me but yeah a and &E let me have my unicorn I remember in Preston they never let me have my unicorn and it was just I wasn't diagnosed with autism at the time and that's my comfort item that's what I go to for comfort so yeah A&E certainly has good and bad moments the best I've been treated was down here in London at Chelsea and Westminster Hospital. That's the hospital A and E that I go to. Uh, Charing Cross was a bit of a joke. Been to the hospital once, don't like it. Preston A and E, which was shit. Telford A and E, which was a uh, on the baseline. But yeah, these are some of my experiences in A and E. I'm going to make a video eventually on what happens when you go to a and &E for suicidal thoughts. If you want me to make that video soon, let me know in the comments down below. And if you have any video requests, leave them in the comments down below too. Thank you for watching and if you're new, subscribe, join the growing family. If you didn't know, I have a Patreon where I post one Patreon only video a week. There's only ever going to be shown on Patreon. I need to film this week's video. But yeah. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video. Peace.